Now, Dr. Waziri Adista, a senior lecturer from the Sociology Department, University of Lagos, joins us in the studio to give solutions to security challenges in the country. Thank you very much yeah, for coming on the program. Fun. Now, in a move to stem the tide of kidnapping and other crimes in the Northwest and also in the North Central, the Nigerian Army has banned the use of motorcycles within the forest, forest areas of seven states. Now, do you think this measure will reduce criminal activities in these yeah, areas? Of course, it, it, will, it will reduce uh, criminal activities, but I think that uh, the Nigerian Army and uh, the security forces need to work with uh, the road unions, the farmers, the local uh, community elders, and then uh, the various groups in the area. So banning a uh, motorcycle is not enough you know, to reduce criminality in the area. They need to take it a step further. Uh, now, as a criminologist, yes. what model do you think the security agencies can adopt to bring an end to you know, all this that we see, and generally insecurity in the state? Uh, Nigeria's security problem is, um, is um, a cooling in nature. It's, not, it's, it's deep seated. And so we have long term solutions and then short term solutions. Now, when you talk of uh, the uh, long term solutions, one of them is to deconstruct the current policing system where you have the federal system of uh, policing. You will need state police. That is a long-term solution. And then another uh, aspect of that is good governance. What you see in the north now is a reflection of uh, the poor level of governance in the region and across the country. So, and then uh, the issue of security has not been the priority of you know, successive governments in the past. So that's uh, as per the long-term solution. Then the short-term solution is what the Nigerian military is undertaking now. One of them is problem-solving policing. Now kidnapping has been identified. What they have done is to ban uh, motorcycle operations in the forest areas. Another one is community policing. That has been part and parcel of our, um, our security system, but it has not been um, integrated fully. So my advice is that the federal government and the state government should integrate this fully by bringing in the local communities. Then the, the, the another model is uh, ILP. ILP is um, a new model of relying more on intelligence to be proactive rather than um, uh, waiting for the crime to occur. So I am suggesting that we adopt the three and so that we can uh, um, comprehensively tackle the banditry in the northern region. Now how will the security agencies adopt this model? Yes, already it's part of uh, the military, it's part of uh, the police, it's part of uh, uh, the other security agencies. But what we need is synergy between the police, the military, and the paramilitary agencies. They need to come together. The issue of rivalry should be removed. They need to come together for the unity, stability, and security of this nation. Now, how do communities and even organizations yes. uh, protect themselves? Yeah, as far as the, in the conflict-prone areas, I am suggesting first to the individuals, we have to be security conscious. And then to the communities, we should be more involved in uh, uh, community policing, vigilante, when, you know, uh, where um, nominated members of households will join uh, the police, nominated members of the household will join the police in um, uh, securing the community. It worked in the case of Badu in Ikorodu, and it's also worked in the case of uh, uh, oil bunkering in Ikorodu, in Lagos, you can see that relatively Lagos is peaceful because everybody is on the same page. The government, the community, the state government, and other stakeholders, even the corporate organizations. You know, so I think it's, it's going to work in other parts of the country. Now to this matter of an alleged, alleged rape case, uh, the IDP camp in Benue State, what do you make of this situation? I think it's, um, it's possible, but one, what government needs to do is to investigate that thoroughly and then do proper profiling of uh, the staff, the camp officials, and the security agencies. 
and then increase surveillance in the, because these people are already psychologically traumatized. Then going through rape, going through all sorts of uh, sexual, uh, um, sexual harassment again will be like exposing them to a uh, human rights violation. So I am suggesting that the federal government and the, the state government should increase surveillance in the ID, ID, IDP camps. Now, would you recommend that perhaps the IDPs themselves try to protect themselves from groups perhaps? Uh, that's, that's okay, but already you know that you are bringing uh, together different people from different backgrounds. So that is part of the solution, but ultimately government should still be in charge because this is a vulnerable group. When you bring people together in such a manner, it could also expose them to other risks. So I am suggesting that government should be in charge of the camp. It is only when government is not in charge that uh, other people can come in and rape them. So proper profiling is crucial. Now, it is the wish of every well-meaning Nigerian, Nigerian to have a safe state, a state, safe nation. Can we achieve this and how can we do this? Uh, it's, it's important we achieve this. Because uh, as it is now, uh, armed banditry is uh, not the only crime in the, in the country. Other crimes are you know, occurring routinely, daily. And the factors are, are, are many, you know, from bad governance, bad leadership, and then uh, state violence. You know? So all these social, economic, political factors must be addressed. You know, if they address, I know that we can have a free, a crime-free society.